Hello, how's it going? So in this video, I am gonna show you how to get your site live on the web so that you can share it with your friends, on the Facebook, on the Twitter, get it live, get people showing it, get people seeing it, that's what this is all about. So we're gonna do that. We are going to use GitHub Pages. It is a pretty easy way and a definitely popular and efficient way to get your site live. GitHub Pages is a tool that's brought to you by the good people over at GitHub. GitHub, in short, if you don't know about it, you need to, everyone uses it, every single company out there uses it these days, as a way to manage, let's say, versions of your code so that you can kind of go back in time, like a timeline or time capsule of your code and share code online with other people. In this video, we're gonna use GitHub Pages, like I said, because GitHub Pages is a way that we can share that code and put it live and share it with other people as a website. So that's what we're gonna do. To get started, you are gonna wanna listen to me with your ears and follow along with your hands. <laughs> we're gonna break this, just kidding. All right, um, but you're gonna wanna go to, you're gonna wanna go to um, yeah, have your browser open and you wanna go to pages.github.com. So here we are, we're going to a website and uh, we're gonna get started. Also for this video, you're gonna want something to get live, yeah, is, is gonna be necessary. For me, the example I'm gonna use is this Cookie Monster project. You can see I open it here locally, right? I uh, just double clicked on my HTML files here, HTML, CSS. I'm gonna upload all that so that what I see here locally on my computer is gonna get live at a domain. So that's the goal. So you need something to, to upload. Okay, so here's how it goes. This is the story. Um, you can come here, you can watch this video. I'm not gonna do that right now. You can do it, check it out, and get a sense of what, what's about to happen. But the easiest way to do this is really just to follow these steps. Step number one, step number question mark, step number two. We'll go through it uh, step by step. No, they just keep coming, but there's not too many. Okay, so the first thing, I'm gonna help, help you make this easy. Um, the first thing it's asking you to do in order to get your site live with GitHub Pages is to create a repository. Now hold on, what the hell does that mean? Um, before we do that, you need a GitHub account, okay? And it says that, it says head over to GitHub and we'll create a repository. Well, first you need an account. So pause right now, don't pause me, but um, yeah, well maybe pause me if you need, but you go over to GitHub here and sign, and sign up, yeah? So this is the first step here, sign up. You just need a username for the site, Castig already taken by me, but maybe you're Castig123. Could be, could be you. I'm not gonna take that one. Um, put your email address, blah, 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 and a really super, super good password with a number. Oh, that makes it better. And create the account. <laughs> cool. Um, and then once you have that, you can choose to make it public. So anything you upload will be public, meaning anyone can search and find your code or private, you know, if you're a company like Facebook or Twitter or big company, um, you don't want people sharing, you know, to see your code, you keep it private, but you gotta pay for that. We, you and I, I'm gonna just make it public because it's free and that's cool. Um, and that is it, and you click next. It's asking me some questions and I'm just gonna skip by those. And that's it, that's all you need to do um, right now and you'll be good. You just need to verify your email address. So now you can pause, take a second, and get your GitHub account set up. If you already have one, let's keep moving. Okay, I have my GitHub account set up, and what we're gonna do is go back to those steps. Create a repository. A repository is a place on GitHub where I'm gonna upload my code. This is kinda like a folder or something I'm gonna put my code up into. I'm gonna create a repository. To do that, um, once you're logged in, you go to GitHub, dot com forward slash new, and we create a repo. Now for this, um, we're gonna wanna create a repo. Um, you can call it anything you want. You can call it like Mr. Cookie Monster or something like that. Um, and that's, that's fine, you can do that. I already did that for mine, I'll show you what happens. You end up going to this domain to see that. I already did this before as a test. So you go to castig.github.io forward slash Mr. Cookie Monster. So that's what happens if I put a name here, you know, like anything Cookie Monster. It's going to be at my URL, castig.github.io. Now here's the thing. If you want it to be the root domain and just this, right, you can do that. Now, of course, you can only choose one site to be your homepage, right, to be at this location. 
Um, so you get to choose. And for this, that's what we're going to do. I'm going I'm to upload that here, because right now you'll see there's nothing there. 404 it means there's nothing there. But I'm going to choose to put it there. And so to do that, the, kind of the trick to it is to put your repository name as that domain. Does that make sense? So whatever your name is here, whatever this says here, see mine's Castig, I'm going to make it Castig at github.io. And so you do the same for your username .github.io, and that will give us that URL. So this is kind of the end game where we want to get. All right, once we have that, you can add a description, whatever. I'm about to upload Cookie Monster to upload something great, whatever. Um, public, because we're not paying, so this has to be public. Um, I don't need a README file, which would be some instructions about, I don't need to do that. I mean, create repository. Cool, so that's what you want to do. So create that repository, take a second if you need. OK. Well, now we get to this page, and there's all this crazy terminal commands that you may or may not be able to read. Um, we don't need to worry about those right now because we're going to go back to our steps. Everything that we learn with coding can be learned online <laughs> and with steps. Uh, so let's get back to our, to our figuring this out. OK. We created our repo. Step number question mark. <laughs> um, what are we using? Well, we could use the terminal, um, which is this built-in you know, command line prompt that we could use, but it's a little bit complicated for this video. So, um, so I'm going to suggest that if you're on Windows, that you use the uh, GitHub for Windows client or application. And if you're on Mac, you use the GitHub for Mac uh, application there. How do you find that? Uh, pretty simple, just, just Google for it. If I do GitHub for Mac, it's going to probably be the first thing that come up. Yeah, GitHub desktop. Here we go, so desktop.github.com. And you can just download this application, OK? So that's what step number two is. It's basically saying, what client are you using? What application are you using? Uh, I'm going to use GitHub for Mac because I'm on the Mac. If you're on Windows, use Windows. Or if you're really comfortable with the terminal, go ahead and do that. But, um, but I'm using this. So I downloaded it. And of course, it's going to go into my, my downloads folder here. Oh my god, I have so much stupid stuff in here. Um, but once you open it up, uh, open it up. Once you open it up, what you're going to want to do on the Mac is, of course, drag this into your Applications folder. Right? I've already done that, so I don't need to do it, but that's what you would do. OK, so you have GitHub now um, on your desktop. I'm going to use Spotlight GitHub and find that. It's in my Applications folder. And I'm going to open it up. And this is where you more or less want to be to get things started. OK, so we did number question mark. Um, we want to do number two. So clone the repository. We have our, our thing set up. We want to clone the repository. Now to do this, we let it know it's GitHub for Mac. It says, click the Setup and Desktop button, which you see here. And what they're referring to is on this page, which hopefully you still have open. Um, if you don't, you could always go to this domain with your stuff at the end um, and find it. And it says, Set up and Desktop. Now I click this, right, and then I hit Open. GitHub Desktop, and it does the work for me. It's amazing. So what, what it's doing is it's downloading that folder. We're going to put stuff in it and then re-upload it, more or less. So let's do that. So we click that button. It's suggesting to clone it, which means copy it. And yeah, let's put it on our desktop. So I'm going to clone that. Boom. Cloned. Consider we cloned. Now if I go to my desktop, which is like a little messy now, now to be honest, but uh, if we messier than I like, but if we go there, you'll see that it made this folder here. And so what we're going to do with this folder is we're going to put code inside of it and then sync it so that when we put code locally, our website is getting synced. That's that's the drill here. So to do that, I'm going to open up my project here, and I'm going to open up the code that I want to put in there. So this stuff here. At this point, you can choose to either copy and paste your code in there and have two copies, but you might want to drag it in and then delete so that you only have one version. It's kind of up to you. I'm going to delete mine because I only need one version here. You can always go back if you screw something up. But OK, so I have my local code here from the folder that GitHub gave me. Right? Oh, and you can see, boom, right? All of a sudden, this populates. That's what should be happening. So if you put it in there correctly, you'll see all the images are coming in, all those files. And if you go to the next step, all right, the next step it tells us create an index file. You already did that. I'm assuming that you already have a project that you want to upload. So we already did that. That's us putting 
the code in that folder. So we don't need to create one. We already did. We already put something in there. If you, for some reason, are watching this and don't have anything, just make a simple index.html file, drag this code in there, and you'll have something to upload. Whew, we are we're doing it. We are doing it, boys and girls. Number four out of five, commit and sync. So all we have to do is um, click this sync button. But ours says publish. So I think the first time, well, first we need to, does it not say to commit it? Oh, commit, commit and sync. So commit means basically write a message about what you're uploading. So I can just say initial commit, which is like the first time I'm committing. It's the first time. Next time, if I make changes, I might describe the changes. But I have no changes, so I'll just say the first commit, the first time I'm committing stuff. And then I commit to master, like that. And that is basically, let me just finish it. You, you publish, and those two things together will sync it and put it up online. Let's see if it worked. Seven for five, and you're done. So now if we go to username.github.io, so for me, my username is Kastig. Got it. That's all I got to do. Um, once you do it a few times, this becomes a lot easier. I broke this down into the steps because there is some weird things where if you don't know what these words mean, commit, uh, repository, all that kind of stuff, it may trip you up a little bit. All right. This is really good. Uh, the last thing I'm just going to leave you with, and you can just watch along, is that if you want to update this, what you're going to need to do is you can, you can update the code right on your desktop just in Sublime, just like you've been doing, coming into here, making little changes. And now every time you do that, every time you make a code to, uh, change to the code here, GitHub, this app, will notice that a change has been made. See, it's saying, uh, red is saying, I deleted that, or basically that changed, and green is what it is now. Um, I could teach a whole course on GitHub and all how this works, but more or less just know that a change has been made, and so you need to commit it every single time. And so I can just say, um, second, or I change the title. I would want to be descriptive. I change of the title tag or something like that. And then you can say, I changed it. Or, you know, you may want to describe in more detail what it is. Commit the changes saying, yep, I agree these changes were made. Sync, sync the changes. And then the syncing is the part where it uploads there. And then we should see, um, oh, there's this right here. It's getting crazy. There you go. Actually, it was this one here. So you can see it's up there. A little change, but just to kind of show you how that works. So that's that's kind of the flow there. Um, you can also, this video is getting longer than I thought it was going to get. Um, if I go here and I refresh, because there's so many cool things to show you. Um, if you go here and you refresh, now you'll see all the code is online. And you can actually change this online as well. If you come here and click Edit, you can actually change it right in GitHub without having to touch the code, well, you touch it here. Um, but if you do that, you're going to want to always uh, sync it so that you always have the same up there and down here. Like I said, there, we may do a whole course on this um, in the future because it's a pretty it's a pretty robust way to share and uh, and and uh, edit and keep your code clean. So uh, that's the primer for getting your stuff live. Get it live. I want to see it. Put it in Slack. Share it on Twitter. Um, we're on uh, Facebook, One Month Edu. We're on Twitter. Let us know. I want to see what you're making. Uh, and it's an exciting time. This is a really good time to have these skills. Hopefully, you got some confidence out of this course. Hopefully, you uh, are going to make some something amazing out of yourself and, and share it with the other students in this course and everyone else in the world. All right. Thank you. Uh, my name is Chris. Uh, at Castig on Twitter. You can reach out to me, and I hope to see you in a future one month course uh, just like this. There's a bunch of other courses you can take here at one month. I'll, uh, I'll see you then. Peace.